Okay, so this is the next step. What I did was I took the tape and I created a bunch of trees, made the skinny ones in the mid ground and the super skinny ones way, way off in the distance and then the larger ones in the front. I actually ripped some little pieces to create some bumps here and there where I thought it would look cool. And you have a lot of latitude with that, so you can eventually change that slightly if you wish with the final piece. Then I took my pencil and I just made three small little lines in there to create a horizon line and some hills in the background. Then what I did was I mixed up watercolors and little cups. So we're going to start with the lightest color. And... Um, I started with the yellow. It was just a little too strong. I always test it ahead of time. So this is a cadmium yellow, and I just added a couple of different shades of brown to it just to make it a little bit um, not so bright. And then I used the violet, but what I did to that was I did add some of this to that so that it just didn't burn your eyes. So I have a nice soft violet here. Then I took Prussian blue, I added a little cadmium orange to it, got kind of an, actually I was surprised with the green, but I suppose because of the, the orange, there's a little yellow in there, so there's a little bit of a greenish hue to it. Then I wanted a really dark Prussian blue in the top, and what I did with that was I did add a little bit of Payne's gray until I got it to the consistency I liked. So now I'm going to paint it doing the best I can under the gun here. So, open that up so we can see it. I'm going to do my sky first, and I do have my salt here. And I want, I think I'm going to just get it wet first so it fuzzes. So I'm just going to take one of my brushes here and just get that whole top area wet. I did end up taping around the outside after I did all my other taping because I felt like that would work better so our, our paper didn't bulge as much. So I tried the arches cover and the problem with the arches cover is that um, the tape peeled off so you ended up with kind of some fuzz. So this is good quality uh, watercolor paper. So I'm just going to go over the top and I'm going to leave a few sparkles here and there because that looks kind of cool and I love how it fuzzes. Kind of hard to see. I'll lift it up so you can kind of see what's happening there. That looks super cool. Then I'm going with my next color, which is the lighter blue. And I'm going to let that fuzz in there. Well, that's not doing a whole heck of a lot and I don't want it to get too dark. So I think I'm just going to leave that. I over mixed a lot of paint but that's okay looks kind of cool and I'm gonna go with some violet I'm gonna drop a little violet in here because I think it'll look nice just run some violet all the way through there let it fuzz and then I'm going to use a little bit of the yellow ochre and the yellow ochre is actually going to be a really handy color when I go to do my trees. So you'll see. So just putting my yellow ochre in there. And it's kind of strong. I'm not sure I'm loving it. So I'm just going to mix a little of this here. And a little of this here. I want it darker. I want my top really dark. So I'm just going to put a second coat there. And then I'm going to let that sort of mush. I don't think I love the yellow ochre, so I'm just going to make it a pretty dark sky. And then I'm going to take my salt. This is what's super cool because the salt is going to give it like little sparkly things eventually. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to create, I think with my violet, I kind of like my violet right now with a little bit of the blue. 
So I'm going to go in and I'm going to create my hills. Now it's winter, so I want it to look like the it's snow. So I'm just going to go along the bottom part of my hill very, very lightly and just blend it up a smidge and leave that white or that violet show. And I think what I'll do is I'll put a smidge of this. It's kind of that, um, that next darkest color without being the darkest color. I'm just going to let a tiny bit, little bit of that go in there. Okay. And I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to go with my, my violet again. And there'll be a little bit more of that here, but I still want it to look like what I could do, and I think I will. I could get that wet first because it's going to fuzz, and that's always cool. So then I'm going to go in with my violet and just put that in there. And then just a tiny little bit of that blue again. And just let them all fuzz together. And if I want them to fuzz a little bit more, all I'm going to do is just lift them up and force them. I'll just bang, bang, bang. That's better. I like how that's fuzzy. You're going to get a lot of drama on this one because I created my sky really dark. And then this is where it gets a little trickier. What we need to do is we need to decide where our light source is coming from. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to just set down the camera and reposition it, is I am going to do a soft wash here. So I'm going to take that violet that I had and I'm going to kind of come in like this and just do a very soft wash coming over there. I want the hills to show, so I'm going to do that. And I do it so that the brush sort of like barely touches, so you get that funk going on. And then I'm going to take um, my medium dark color first, and I'm going to create my light source. So I haven't actually decided where my light's coming from because you can't really tell. So I am going to make this darker over here and I think I'm going to do it like randomly. I'm just going to like drop some paint. I have to lift up my thing so you can see it. I'm going to just drop some paint in there randomly just to make it look really dark over there. Like you least expect it to be that dark. I think that would look kind of cool. And then as we go along here, it'll be a little darker here. What's going to be super cool is that once you rip that tape off, and I'm painting it wetter than I actually expected to, but that's okay. So I'm going to throw a little of this violet in here. So I want it really, oops, this isn't my violet, wrong one. Violet here. We'll just have some more violet on this end. It's going to be very dark, very dramatic over here. And then just a little glow coming up because I think that would look kind of nice. Now, the foreground is actually a little trickier. And I'm going to shake some more salt on there because I think it might look cool. Then, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take... I'm going to use my medium color first. And I am going to create my shadows for my trees. So if you look, well, this one can only go that far to the hill. So there's a shadow on that tree right there. This one right there. Then this one, those, they can be on top of the hill. So you can kind of see their little shadows. There's a shadow here. Going here, there's a little shadow, a little shadow here. I make that pretty dark. Nice shadow. What's that kind of the medium blue that I used? It had the orange mixed with it. This one's 
at the bottom of the hill, so I'm just going to put a shadow at the bottom of the hill. None of those, but I can put shadows on the bottom of the hill too if I think I want those. And I'm going to go in here. Shadow, 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 shadow. That one doesn't have one. This one would have a pretty strong one, and I'm gonna have it like it's coming this way, so it's gonna like come all the way across from underneath. Very strong shadow. Shadow coming pretty strong too, all the way across. Shadow coming all the way to the end. There we go, like that. Then I'm gonna take a little of the violet And I'm going to kind of mix it with that just for fun and grins. So it's just sort of coming there, another shadow there. Just a little bit of the violet mixed in with it. Just enough without being too much. And then the last thing I'm going to do, we're going to have to let this dry and see what happens because it's always an adventure. Um, I'm actually going to take my my purple brush because I think that'll be a good color. I just dipped it into the paint and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to just stretch it out like this. Just kind of torment it a little. Keep working on it. There's just going to be a little bit of paint on there and then I'm just going to go like this. Sort in the direction that we're going. Just a few little lines, barely any paint at all. And I'll probably need a little bit more. So I'll dip it, I'll wipe it, and I'll stretch it with my fingers again, like I did before. Just like this, stretching it with your fingers. It's kind of messy. But then you just get a few little lines going in there like that. And then I feel like it needs something up near the top here because I don't quite love this so I'm going to go like that. Now this paint is sort of muted because of the other colors that I have in there and then I'm going to take more of it, stretch it out and I'm going to put it like here. You can see I'm just going to have more of it coming from this end. And I want it to go to my tree. That, see, that's the tricky part. I want it to go to my tree because I want to be able to see the tree when I end up putting, I could put a little yellow on my tree too. But my light is coming, as you can see, my, my light is coming down through there. So what I want to do is I want the darker shadows over on this side and I want the other side to be almost completely white. So I'm going to just stick a few more of those shadows in there, make it look a little dirty, like snow is. Maybe just a little bit more here. It's going to dry a little lighter. We won't see exactly what it's going to dry like, but this is the start of this one. Now they're all different. Um, this one here, when I went to show it to you, I think I neglected to mention that that is my friend Pat Ryer who showed me how to do that and she has less inner snow. Her snow is whiter. I have dirty snow. Who knows but who's been playing mischief in my snow, but I have dirtier snow. And then this is the one that I worked on before. I realized that there's acrylic paint spilled on it because obviously we were working on two projects and something happened. But that's what happens. So we're going to leave this for now. And in the next video, I'll take the tape off and we'll see what happens.